Hello. To all you nobblers out there in lobotomy land, welcome to the steampunk. I sail the skies, submerge the depths of the ocean, and roll tirelessly across the land to bring you content you probably won't think much about until I and my crew in our steam-powered vessel find it and relate it to you. As for me, I may or may not be the steampunk, but you can count on this one thing. I'll hit you with opinionated opinions about damned near everything. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel by clicking the appropriate links you'll find somewhere. Your participation will help grow this channel and ensure more and a wider variety of topics, discussions, examinations, analyses, and commentary to enlighten, entertain, and often piss you off. <laughs> Which of course the steampunk will worry oh so little about. And now Let's talk about relationship advisors. Notice I say relationship advisors, not relationship advice. I'll be back in a moment. As I speak, the steampunk is cruising effortlessly along at about 52,000 feet above the planet, studying atmospheric anomalies analogous to anything to which we can correlate it. We originally thought we would act as independent advisors to meteorologists the world over, but they apparently are not ready to give credence to our theories, perhaps because they doubt our expertise. Thinking about this, I came to wonder if I could blame them. In light of the unsolicited and unqualified advice pumped out by those who purport to be experts, though they are little more than merely famous. I'm talking about relationship advisors. Yes, these individuals who have been famous for longer than 12 days and think that qualifies them to dole out relationship advice like it's church raffle tickets or something, to people who not only don't know them but whom they know nothing whatsoever about. You must be one of those jokes if you give any significant credence to any of the drivel they spew. Now, it is acceptable to take advice from strangers on some things such as how to hem a pair of pants or how to cook a steak a certain way. But why would anyone with more than 57 brain cells trust someone they don't know from Adam or Eve for that matter with something that lives at the core of their very being? their relationships with a significant other person with whom they share their minds, their hearts, their bodies, their time, their hopes, dreams, and fears, and even their souls, according to the thought processes of some folks who actually believe we as humans can interact with each other's souls. Anyway, why would you trust that level of yourself to someone you don't know and who doesn't know you, doesn't know your situation, doesn't know the person or persons, if that's the thing you're into, you're involved with and who hasn't the faintest clue as to the dynamics of your unique and particular situation. What are you, nuts? Come now. A comedian? Someone who can afford a nice wig, a fancy hat and some podcasting gear? Someone who used to date an NBA player? Those things make them experts? Those things somehow give them efficacious insight into something they haven't even investigated, that being your personal life. And you trust that? Listen to the steampunk on this one and be smart. Don't take relationship advice from anyone who doesn't know you and whom you don't know. And if I'm honest, that includes me. But I'm not here to give you relationship advice. I'm here to give you advice about relationship advice and the evaluation thereof. Consider, if you will, how illogical it is to accept or worse yet seek such advice from such people just because more than 1,350 people have heard of them or know who they are. Should you find yourself in an emotional quandary over your thing thing with some other person and you feel you, for some odd reason, need to consult someone, why not consult the one person most qualified to give you knowledgeable advice? The one person whom you can always know will have the clearest understanding of the dynamics of what you're going through, someone who you can count on having your best interests at heart. And who might that be? You. Yes, you. You know yourself. 
You know the person or persons you're dealing with. You know the history and hope embedded in the situation. That lady with the lucrative podcast and the matronly rational demeanor, for all the validity she appears to project, not only knows none of those things to any degree that would validate her advice, but she, as well as the other men and women who do this, pathetically lack knowledge of the single most important thing that must be taken into account in such situations. But you know this thing. What is it? You know what you want. Yes, you know what you want. You know what you want to do. You know what you want to happen. You know how you want the situation to evolve, revolve, or resolve. They simply don't. You see, the steampunk believes the overwhelming majority of us, no matter what situation we come to be in, we know what we want. We're just sometimes not sure that what we want is what's best for us. That's where we let ourselves become confused. Notice I said we let ourselves become confused. Confusion is not the natural state of a person used to thinking for themselves. Relationships, like most everything else in life, and yes, there are exceptions, but relationships are very, very simple. We make them and other things complicated by the way we deal with them, the mental state in which we approach them, and the emotional turmoil we are usually embroiled in when we have to make tough decisions about them. It's no wonder many of you are so confused. After all, look at what you're doing. You're taking 35 pieces of advice from 28 different people, all of whom are doing nothing but offering opinions. Based on what? Many of them say, oh, I know what I'm talking about because I've been through this or something like it. So what? That's not only anecdotal, but remember, 10 people can have the exact same experience and interpret it 10 different ways. So when these posers claim their advice is based on their experience, no, it's not. Their advice is based on their interpretation of their experience, not the experience itself. You could have the same experience and interpret it differently than they do. How then can their advice be efficacious for you? Shh, it can't. Now, the steampunk will allow for this one contraindication that there might be something offered by one of these manglers that happens to mesh very well with your particular situation and you may thereby, therefore, be helped. And that's great when it happens, but how often does it happen? Let's be honest, are people in general more confused or less confused about relationships since the explosion of all these advisors cluttering up YouTube? Much of what you hear is how hard, how complex, how confusing, how frustrating, and how it's complicated relationships are. Hogwash. Relationships are not that complicated. They're just not. It's easy to see by the time you listen to every erudite blowhard after throwing out advice why you're so confused. But that doesn't make relationships confusing. You don't seem aware that these people aren't giving you advice. They're just throwing noise out there hoping you're gullible enough and desperate enough to swallow the hook, the line, and the sinker. And there you are, caught like a fish, hook well set in your lip, flopping around, out of your element, unable to breathe, unable to move forward. So you take his or her advice. You do what they say because, hey, it damn sure sounded good. Damn sure sounded good. But then you look up and you're alone and lonely and not only is your relationship dead as a doornail, but the better part of your life is jacked up too. What will you do now? Will you go to them and ask why they jack your life up? No, you won't. And even if you did, they're just going to ignore you or remind you that, hey, they never expected you to take their advice. It was for entertainment purposes only, remember? <laughs> You've been played. <laughs> and where are they? Why, on their way to the bank, of course. You see, these goombas don't care if you take their advice or not. Neither do they care if you like or agree with them or not. You go to their page to praise them because, oh wow, they are so on point. Or you go to insult them because, hey, she hates men and he hates women and they're both are just palm scum bashing men and women or both or men or women. They don't care. Either way, whatever your reason for watching their content, going to their page to praise or condemn results in the same end for them. 
they get paid. That's all they want and that's all they care to get. The rest is just overhead to be tolerated while their bags fill up. So what do you do when you genuinely believe you need relationship advice? This one's easy. Consult yourself. You, yeah, you, remember? You know you. You know the other person. You know the dynamics and the all important concept of what you want. Learn to dispense with the emotion and mental barriers to clear thinking and spend time cogitating on things. Weigh the relevant factors. You may discover that what you want and what is best for you are the same, or at least very easily homogenized. Or you may find that what you want is diametrically opposed to what you know is best for you. In the former case, you can simply proceed. Do what you want, what makes you feel good. Make your plan and move into it. Or in the latter case, you may find you have to make a hard decision. The best thing might be to leave the situation or it might be to stay and work to fix it. Either way, it's your decision, your life, so make sure you are the principal advisor on the matter. The steampunk believes you will most likely find your situation is somewhere in the middle of these two extremes. So think about it, weigh all factors, evaluate all options, make up your mind, and prepare to proceed. But at this point, it might be a good idea to seek opinions from others. But notice I said seek opinions, not advice. At this point, you should need no further advice. You're done with advice. So why seek opinions? Because it's possible another person might mention something you hadn't thought about that might be relevant to your situation, and that might lead to a modification of your plan of action that will augment its efficacy. Now, don't go running back to these generic thimbleheads for these opinions. Seek out someone you know, trust, and can believe most assuredly they have your interests at heart and are willing to be very honest with you. Or, if you want to take opinions from these unqualified, uneducated, unregulated, uncertified, ignorant, biased, insensitive, empathy-starved boneheads, many of whose lives are as messy as you think yours is, well, that's your choice to make and the steampunk won't denigrate you for that. I'll just say it's unwise. The gist of what I'm saying is, don't take relationship advice from people you don't know and who don't know you. Trust yourself. You will find once you trust yourself and you really know how to step out of your feelings when you need to, which is another of a lot of you all's issue, you will be surprised at how smart you are and how simple it all is and how quickly, easily, and decisively you can put yourself on top of any situation. And that'll be enough of that. Subscribe to my channel. You'll hear things on this channel you won't hear anywhere else, including music. Surprise, surprise. If you want to send me some money, go ahead. I'm just kidding. Well, everybody else asks, why shouldn't I? I'm just kidding. You can also choose to talk trash about me, call me names, insult me. It won't matter, not even that much. Believe nothing but that for whatever of these three you choose, an appropriate level of respect will be rendered either gratefully appreciated or categorically ignored. <laughs> You'll be seeing me or someone surprisingly similar on future episodes on this channel. You won't be able to tell the difference. I don't and I should know. So settle back as I close the book on another episode of The Steampunk. Bye now.